The year is 1933. The United States is in the midst of the Great Depression. For most Americans, jobs are scarce and the future is uncertain. But for the sons of the wealthy East Coast upper class, life continues much as before. For many of these young men attending Harvard University will be the final step into the world that is their birthright. Harvard was controlled by, attended by, and was part of the, the nobility of American society. Really what we have is, is a world of Eastern educated exclusionary education. It's a very elite, very small population. In 1933, James Bryant Conant, a young chemistry professor, is appointed as the university's new president. Conant wants to radically change Harvard, its students, its faculty, and its academic focus. The first thing he begins to think about doing is how can I create an admissions process that will allow us to draw not just from the elite private schools, people who have long-standing wealth in their family, but bring people to Harvard who are more representative of the American population. And here's the important part. He wants to admit people on the basis of their capability. If Harvard is to become a truly national university, we should attract to our student body the most promising young men throughout the nation, whether he be rich or penniless. James Bryant Conant, December 1933. His ideas were not particularly popular when, when he brought them forward because the ruling classes, the, the moneyed classes of this society, were not real into changing the structure as they knew it and loved it. 